My name is Dr. Stephen Miller. I am a neonatal neurologist and lead the Division of Neurology and the Center for Brain and Mental Health at the Hospital for Sick Children in the University of Toronto. Our research team is excited to see our paper in the April 2017 issue of Developmental Medicine Child Neurology. Our paper addresses corpus callosum development and neurodevelopmental outcome in very preterm neonates. What's already known is that a significant proportion of neonates born preterm exhibit deficits in motor and cognitive function across the life course. White matter injury and intraventricular hemorrhage are commonly detected on MRI in neonates born preterm. Importantly, these brain injuries do not fully explain the burden of neurodevelopmental concerns in this population. Recent evidence suggests that brain dismaturation is a key determinant of neurodevelopmental impairments in the neonate born preterm. Normal brain maturation is also an important predictor of infants who will have optimal developmental outcomes. Now the corpus callosum is the major white matter interhemispheric commissure of the human brain, connecting the right and left hemispheres. Previous studies suggest that the corpus callosum may provide a robust indicator of brain development. We wanted to make this accessible to clinicians from MRI scans. What's new in our article is that we show that in very preterm newborns, brain injuries associated with changes in corpus callosum growth and that these changes predict neurodevelopmental outcomes at 18 months corrected age. Our research was performed by a multidisciplinary team of researchers at University of British Columbia and BC Children's and Women's Hospital, as well as at SickKids. We examined a prospective cohort of 193 neonates born at 24 to 32 weeks gestation studied with MRI early in life. 159 were scanned again at term equivalent age. Using these scans, we characterized corpus callosum development from early in life to term equivalent age. We used simple measures of corpus callosum area to measure growth of this white matter bundle. And we used diffusion tensor imaging to measure microstructure. We also examined these infants at 18 months corrected age to evaluate their neurodevelopmental outcome. In our paper, we provide normative values for simple measures of corpus callosum growth. We discovered that white matter injury and intraventricular hemorrhage were strongly associated with reduced corpus callosum area, with the posterior area being most vulnerable to even mild injury. We also found that white matter injury was associated with abnormal microstructure of the corpus callosum. Finally, we found that smaller corpus callosum size in the posterior subdivision was associated with adverse motor outcomes. Less mature corpus callosum microstructure was associated with abnormal cognitive outcomes. We hope that these findings provide clinicians with simple measures of corpus callosum development that contribute meaningfully to their care of preterm newborns.